Hey folks, how you doing? This is Tracy Blake from Your Duck. They call me T. Anyway, I wanted to show you it's a quick demonstration on how to put a kill in the Traditions decoy. And if you watch, we got other videos on how to put kills in the Pamico Sounder and a lot of the different species of longliners. And you don't have to hunt any Your Duck decoy with a kill. You don't have to put the kill in it. It's, it is a ballast weight. The whole idea is because the head of the head of the bird weighs more than the body. It will help you self right the bird by having a weight in the bottom. But if you want to keep your bird light and you want to be able to hunt it light, just place it on the water with your weight on it. It'll sit right there just fine. All three of the product lines, the Pamico Sounders, the Traditions, and the Longliners will all three set if you place them. And they won't be flipping over in the wind, you know. But if you want a self uprighting and a little bit stronger weight to handle the water, then we'll put a kill in it. Now there's a couple, two or three different ways. You see I'm holding this ink pen. This little kill slot's about seven inches. Do you have to cut it perfect? All right, well, let me show you on a tape measure so you'll have an idea. This way we can zoom it in, take a look. Okay, there's your seven inch mark. It's a little shy of that. You can cut the thing at six, you can cut it six and a half, you can cut it six and three quarters. You can have any amount of space you want there because both of these walls are designed to receive your two before. It's really simple. Now, you've done seen that we're looking at a seven inch se se segment or a section. I'm gonna pull this up here, mark it. And I'm gonna show you just a typical square keel. I'm gonna cut it at about seven or six and three quarters. All right, now that's a typical little square keel. Is there anything wrong with that? If you're looking to get out in the water quick, you just got your decoy in, no, there's nothing wrong with it. We'll take another board and tap them in like that and kill their flush, okay? Now, that's without glue, but you can get them back out, at least we hope so, okay? You can get them out once you get them in there, but all you have to do is glue this one. But I'm gonna show you a couple more ideas because I don't like that square edge. I'm going to be putting my decoys in bags, but even still, if I lay them on top of each other, then I want to be able to make sure that there's not a sharp corner denning or trying to cut into my decoy or scratching the paint off or working on the head or anything like that or changing my swivel position on the traditions where they got the swivel heads. So when I do that, what I'm going to do is we'll take the same one and all we're going to do is chop off the corners. If you'll mark your depth in here, this is an easy way to do this so you can see it. Let me see. I don't know if y'all can make that out or not. But right there, it's reading on my finger at the one and a half mark. Okay? So if I come up here and I take that board I just cut and I mark it at that one and a half mark, and I'm going to go just a hair shy of that. You see it right here? I'll hold it there. I'm going to mark it right here. And I'm going to slide it up and mark it again. Okay. Then I got a semi straight edge to work from. I'm going to come down here, square it off. And I'm going to draw me a line. That tells me right, oops, that tells me right there in my depth of what that keel is going to go into my bird. This way I don't chop it away off. I'm going to set it right there. It, this is not science, y'all. Just get it. Now, all I done was taper those edges on that keel. Okay? Now I can take my palm sander. Let me switch power supply out. I'll take that palm sander. And I'll smooth out those edges. And I'm going to put some horsepower on it. So let me just lay it on this table to work with. I'm not worried about what's in the bird, only what's outside. Just taking those corners and hard edges off. And it's about a 60 grit, so it don't take it very long.
Now, is this required? No, it's not required. You can use it if you want to, if you want to soften it up. Now when something hits my bird, it's not going to be that hard on it. It's not going to be a sharp point creasing into it. Plus it also doesn't snag on my long lines as near as much when I put my clips on here. Okay, now it just sits in there. You can put it either way you want. But now, if you're daisy chaining, what is daisy chaining? That's when you take a decoy and you hook the front of the decoy behind another decoy. And you go here from here to another decoy. What's the purpose of daisy chaining? You don't have the long line clips to deal with. You don't have the drops. You can feed it out straight. When you're using monofilament from daisy chain birds from one to the other, the monofilament doesn't show, and it's a fast way to deploy a bunch of decoys. And if you'll look, one day we should have a rigging video up. If we get the rigging video up, look for that rigging video. It will teach you a little bit about the daisy chaining method. And then you can use that, that system. But for right now, we're going to talk about long lining. But if I was going to run a daisy chain, I would take and go above that line right there. And I would just take and drill it using this board as my backer. Okay, and then I got a hole right here where I can run my monofilament right there to the next bird. So it would go towards the rear of the decoy, okay? So now I can run a line from here to the other decoy or to the weight, you follow me, or and run a line here to another decoy. All that makes sense to you? And that is how you put a keel in their traditions decoy. Now, I'll show you one more keel that was designed, and we'll glue this next one in just so you can get an idea of how you can make one to wrap. Remember that was a one and a half inch mark. We got a seven inch hole, okay, or so six. This board or this unit right here is basically a little bit more than six inches, okay, which is perfect. So if I go to the other end of this and mark it right there, that'll give me a place for my chop saw to go, just my marking. Here's your six inch mark. That's about six and three quarters. Perfect, right? All right. Now, if I come up here an inch and a half, and I'm going to guess at that just so I, because I know about what it is. And you should be able to, too. You can look at it if you know what your finger is, an inch and a half. If I go right here, and that gives me my depth on my decoy. All right, now I'm gonna come off this edge, and I'm gonna make myself a mark right here, okay? And you'll see why in just a minute. So, does that mean that I can't cut this all the way across? Sure I can. I know I got enough to go into the decoy, because all I'm looking at is to make a ballast weight. Simple system. I need to switch over my power supply again. Take me about two seconds here. Okay. I'm satisfied that that's plenty good. Now, what did I just do? Okay, I just made a keel system that you can put in there. And well, how's the advantage now? If I put that in there, now I can take my weighted line and I can wrap it around there and it'll have a shelf to stay on. Okay, that way I go from here all the way across the front of it, just keep on wrapping it. Now I got a way I can take, actually take my weight, hook it up here, and you've got it done, okay? That's the system there. Now, I'm going to shorten it up just a little. Pushing that chop saw to the max out here in this drop pool. All right. Now, what do you do? Gorilla glue. Y'all see it? Gorilla glue is the same component as urethane foam. It is a one-part product, but it also has a catalyst in it that when it gets air, it'll start expanding like foam does, like these decoys are made out of. So if you want a true attachment, what can you, what, what, what is better than using Gorilla Glue? You can find it even at a dollar store, because believe it or not, that's where I bought this bottle, was at a dollar store. Easy to find at any hardware store. When we put glue on these keels, 
you got to remember, where is the phone going to attach? Remember, this is your line. So you put a little bit right here on the corner. Just make a bead. That's all you're looking for. A little bit across that end. Some down the middle. I think little beads. Because it will expand and will foam up. Okay? Once I get those done, then I set it. And remember, this is the kill for wrapping the weight. And I'll take another two before tap it to make sure it's bottomed out. You can see it went all the way to the line. The line is not visible anymore. That is how you put a kill in a Traditions decoy. Now, if you're going to make it for one of our H bars, one of the things you need to find, there is buoyancy. Although it weighs a lot, this 2 by 4 also is buoyant. So although it weighs a lot, but you need to find the center point. Where will that be? Look at your decoy. Forget the tail is there and center it from there. So your center point would be right along in here. Now, I can make a loop off of that center point right here. Make that loop there, put a carabiner on it, clip it right to our H bar. Now this decoy will float our H bar so that we can put our motion decoys on top. A couple, looks like a couple uh, assault golden eyes would be right on time, sitting right on top of that H bar with this holding it up. That's how it's done. Now you know how to put, how simple it is to put your keel in there. You can go with a square board, you can taper it and smooth it out. You can go this one so you can wrap it any way that you use it. Just remember to put them in a bag. It's easy to do, nothing to it, a little grill of glue, drop in your keel. That simple.